All right, I'm going to try to make this real quick, guys. I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I think socialism sucks and it should be utterly and abjectly rejected in this nation. Number one, socialists need street thugs and a paramilitary to advance their wicked ideologies. Uh, historically, that's always been true. Lenin really had the first Antifa, historically speaking. Uh, Mussolini had the black shirts who looked and acted an awful lot like Antifa. Hitler had the brown shirts. And, uh, you know, Antifa today has massive political and media backing. Um, you know, they have George Soros behind them. That's well documented. And Black Lives Matter, who now wants to abolish the police only to replace them with themselves, by the way, um, you know, they want to replace the police so that they can enforce their ideology, not to protect the rights of citizens and not to enforce laws, but to advance their ideology. Uh, number two, identity socialism. See, now, before Karl Marx, the original communists would be small groups, 100 or so people, who would pool their resources and live together harmoniously. Karl Marx took things a step further and sought to divide people according to their class, worker versus capitalist. Uh, and basically, you know, economists always wondered why the idea of, of socialism never really took in America. And the reason is because in America it was quickly recognized that you can work within the system and be very happy. You know, if you're a worker, you work hard, you have some discipline, uh, you put in the extra hours, and pretty soon you can be just like your boss, maybe even own your own business, and be the kind of person that Karl Marx would want to turn your workers against. Um, it never really took in America until critical race theory took hold, and, <clears throat> you know, modern-day Marxists found that, well, if we can't turn people against each other economically, maybe we can do, through, do so socially. So we'll turn black against white, male against female, uh, gays against straights, turn the transgendered against the cisgendered, turn the legal immigrant against the illegal, illegal immigrant. And in so doing, they can create this coalition of the victims, a coalition of a, of a permanent victim class to overturn the, um, the evil cis white male. People like me. <clears throat> so... And you can't do that through elections. It has to be done um, through identity politics. And number three, socialism does not desire an honest debate. Um, there's always double standards, laws for thee and not for me, right? So, for example, um, you can have a funeral for a victim of a, uh, a very severe crime by a police officer and in a pandemic, have a, a funeral with over a thousand people. But if your grandma dies, she dies alone, and 10 people get to go to her funeral if you can find a funeral home that's going to take care of her arrangements. See, there's, uh, there's not equal protection under the law, and there's no honest debate. And it's not about principles, it's about power, right? So let's say, for example, um, you take some ideology about, you know, uh, health care for health care for illegal immigrants and why don't we take their their idea of uh, which seems on its face very principled well why don't we take that same money build hospitals in Mexico and put a health care system in place there so that they can have health care where they live well if they live in Mexico they don't come here and vote most of the time illegally so uh, again, we can't have an honest debate. We can't have um, we can't have uh, equal protections. We can't have equal equal weights and measures. We have to have double standards, and that's because it's not about principle. It's about power. Uh, number four, there are no examples of socialism working successfully in this world. Now, before you point to Scandinavia, I'm going to tell you pump the brakes dude because here's the deal that Scandinavia is not socialist in Scandinavia no Scandinavian country Sweden Finland Norway they do not control the means of production through the government 
Furthermore, they are capitalist in wealth creation, all right? They have low corporate tax rates. In fact, mostly very close to the same of Amer as America, about 20%, give or take. In Scandinavia, they have no minimum wage, no wealth tax, no inheritance tax. Finland abolished universal basic income because it was a failure. And um, they don't demonize the rich. And everyone pays taxes. And everyone pays fairly high taxes because Scandinavia does have a robust welfare system. Um, but that cannot be confused or conflated with socialism. Um, and you notice the left, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, these democratic socialists who hold up Scandinavia, um, they never propose any Scandinavian policies as part of their agendas. And it should make you ask, it should make you ask yourself why. Why is that exactly? Number five reasons why socialism sucks is... They are experts at framing a narrative and won't abandon it in spite of all the evidence that contradicts the narrative. For example, George Floyd's death, as tragic as it is, um, they will tell you is a symptom of systematic racism. Systematic meaning it's foundational. It's foundational. Racism is foundational to policing in Minneapolis. The problem is nobody can point you or me or anyone else to a single policy in Minneapolis in the police department or an ordinance or a law on the books that is racist. They can't. So it's just this nebulous thing out there in the ether. There's no evidence. So that doesn't make them give up the narrative, though. And again, go back, they don't desire honest debate, so they won't even debate you on this issue. They'll simply dismiss you, as I suspect is going to happen in the comment feed of this video. Uh, number six, socialism rewards only the political class. Only the political class. Now think of this. Think of the political class in this country. The Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Bernie Sanders of the world, the, uh, the Bidens, all of these people came from nothing going into politics, except for probably the Bushes, actually, um, came from nothing and went into politics and came out with hundreds of millions of dollars in their pockets in spite of never creating anything before that. Why is that? Why is that? Because it only benefits, socialism only benefits the ruling class, the political class, and it never helps people. Never helps the people that they claim that it does. Okay? Number seven, class warfare. It requires class warfare. We have to pit the rich against the poor, the haves against the haves nots. Right? <clears throat> Dave Ramsey, somebody who I admire, is one who uh, has studied millionaires. When we think of the wealthy, we can think of someone who has a net worth of a million dollars. We'd think of them as, as the rich, right? He surveyed over 10,000 millionaires. His organization did. It's a big organization. I think they have 3,500 employees. Nonetheless, what they found is that the top three, the top three careers that had a net worth of a million dollars was engineers, accountants, and school teachers. And they got to their millions by wise investing choices, by avoiding debt like the plague, and by keeping a strict budget, being disciplined, working hard. Isn't that what the American dream is all about? So to demonize the, the rich and create a class warfare in this country, basically you have to demonize school teachers. You have to demonize accountants. It's not that, you know, millionaires or the super wealthy, there aren't a bunch of Jeff Bezos and Elon Musks walking around this country. It's mostly everyday people like you and me. And oh, by the way, the average millionaire in this country has a four-year-old vehicle with no car payments. So maybe we can learn something from them. Ah, number eight. Number eight. They advance their agenda by generating artificial panic, and they've done it my whole natural life. In the 70s, it was all about food shortages. In the 80s, it was all about nuclear war, mutually assured destruction. 
In the 90s, it was holes in the ozone layer. In the 2000s, and really since, it's been climate change, global warming, global cooling, whatever, whatever they're calling it today. And here today in 2020, it is coronavirus, it's global pandemics, Agenda 21, right? Um, not to mention systematic racism. So we have to have an artificial panic to spread the agenda, to make us turn to the government as our savior. Help us, help us, government. Number nine, all socialism leads to tyranny, violence, and death. And isn't that what we see right here in America? Like in the last three months, America's been trying out the training wheels for socialism. And what you see is tyranny, the, the systematic stripping of rights, the burning of the Constitution, uh, violence, and death. And that's everywhere. And again, don't point to Finland because I'm going to point you back to number four. Okay? Um, every country that's tried socialism has had that issue. And um, it's just the way it is. It's an indisputable fact. <clears throat> number ten, it's evil. It is evil. It is sinful. It's a sinful thing. And here's the reason why. is because it destroys the conscience of a human being. Now imagine the government looks at your neighbor and says, you can have from them whatever you need because they have more than you. They have three cars and only two drivers. You don't have a car. Go take one of their cars. We endorse that. You might have a problem with that. You might be really uncomfortable with that. Maybe the government says, go to your neighbor's house ransack their cupboards and their pantry their refrigerator take what you need they have plenty look at their income look how they live you would be really uncomfortable with that go through their closets take their clothes or shoes you'd be really uncomfortable with that but when the government does the looting for you well now now we're on to something now i can take that stimulus check now i can take that welfare i can take that universal basic income because I didn't steal it out of anyone else's pocket. The looting government did it on my behalf. And remember, the government doesn't create anything. It can't. The only money it gets is money that it's taken from actual producers, from actual producers in this country. <clears throat> and by the way, you know, about half of our budget is debt. So watch out for inflation, because that's another way that the government gets... gets uh, the money of producers also. So those are my 10 reasons why socialism sucks. And I would say to the, the overarching theme of all of it, it is, is that it is anti-Christ. It is anti-Christian. It, it seeks to make the government your God and to turn you from Christ. And that's what we need right now. We need Christ. We need revival in this nation. If we turn to socialism... God help us all. That's it, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Please share. Thanks for watching.